next on list here i want to quickly touch upon team jackets this is like a little rant just for me personally that i'm not really i don't think anybody else will really identify because it, this is triggering but essentially this is news i saw courtesy of hypebeast and they're um, sharing this news regarding Pat celebrates his team members personal experiences for spring summer 22 so they obviously have their own version of a team jacket that they're putting out by Peta, and it's really nice you know not going to deny that it doesn't look great but it did remind me of an era in time where it felt like these and it's still it's for some reason it's returning now for some reason there's been some sort of return to team jackets and this whole idea of people in the know being given special limited edition jackets with certain patches and stuff posting it on their feed making themselves look cool basically wanking themselves off and i just hate it it's absolutely lame seeing grown adults pretend that they're in some sort of fictional gang or team or something is just really really lame like the height of lameness especially because most of these adults have been on the scene for like two decades three decades you know with their hands out getting seeded products and stuff and then showing off to children that are 18 it doesn't affect me or it does affect me because i'm the one ranting but in general they're showing off to children like to literal teenagers um these grown adults who could be their fathers uh oh look i've got this cool jacket you don't have it and i absolutely hate it i think the genesis of it obviously from the old school days of you know stussy having their um crew jackets that they had from back in the day i think maybe the 80s 90s there's really good scans of it you see the stussy international crew there was something to it right that tied it or something substantial whether it was surfing skateboarding music djing nightlife whatever just a scene it was great to see all these people basically being reflected in the lookbook of stussy because it made you know stussy international crew sean sushi was basically one of the kind of forefathers of streetwear it made sense that time but even nowadays you're still seeing people that are you know in their 60s getting stussy team jackets and stuff for what reason and then showing off on your feed who are you impressing i don't understand this it's just bizarre um and it reminds you of a time back in the day when i used to work for nike i went to this um store called 1948 in shoreditch which at the time was like one of their sort of um uh what would you call it one of their first sort of like limited edition sort of stores they had an another one too in new york i think called mercer something i forgot the name of it but it was launched in conjunction with the beijing olympics and then from then on it kind of evolved into a a sort of location where you could get tier zero um, nike product you could get nike sportswear apparel and other things going on so it's quite a cool little location and afterwards i think for whatever reason ended up closing but it was a great little spot and when we were there for whatever reason i guess maybe licensing laws we weren't officially employed by nike we were basically contractors and as soon as that was the case and we weren't getting paid through nike we basically had to invoice them it immediately caused the friction between us and and t and basically nike uk for whatever reason and my interpretation of it was that in general those sort of companies i'd imagine nike i'd imagine car adidas all these sort of like established like uh sportswearish sort of like lifestyle brands that everyone swore wants to work for they intrinsically have people in there who are cunts intrinsically because in general i would say those sort of roles could be done by anybody i could do them you could do them with your eyes closed it's not easy it's not like a hard job to get and because of that i think the people that are there they kind of get grandfathered in or they get brought in by a friend they always feel a little bit i guess intimidated or whatever it may be by newer blood by fresher talent by people coming in so they make it as hard as they possibly can for you to get in there so you'd be d dissuaded and kind of put off and then decide to do your own thing which means they keep the job forever usually because i'd imagine again I've, I've not seen many people in those places i've hanged around them you know for a couple of times but from what i know there's a there's a really low especially for when it comes to middle mid-level jobs in those kind of places people don't leave they stay there forever like you know I'm, I'm sure there's people there working that have been there since i've known them and they've not left those jobs because it's a pretty cushy place you get sick discounts you get a good salary you get to wear nike every single day Do you know what i mean this as jobs go it's pretty decent but it kind of breathes this attitude it feels like where it's it's a little bit we're in a cool club you know what i mean you can't it could be with us you're over there and i felt it and again i was working for a flipping legit nike store and now we felt like outsiders so when we felt like outsiders there was this thing that they had going on i forgot what it was part of again it was a promotional thing where they had these nike destroyer <laughs> jackets right and they had one for each city around the world i think all the marquee cities one for london blah 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 right london paris milan i don't know they had ones for each location around all the cool places and they gave them to all the quote-unquote movers and shakers in the city who were doing cool things and for whatever reason 
obviously you know no one's expected to get featured in the ad but for whatever reason people that actually worked in the store never got them i think maybe some people got them through their own links and then they were also given to people that were kind of prominent in the scene people that were kind of doing stuff cool stuff in the scene like going around at that time you know i had a pretty popular blog at the time i was doing a pretty popular part well i was doing a party that was semi-popular at a very popular club so you would imagine i would be someone that would have been given that kind of jacket and like oh hey it's recognition that you're doing some cool stuff but that didn't happen and I think a lot of it had to do, of course, with my personality. Don't get me wrong. I'm pretty sure I shot myself in the foot a couple of times, but it just felt like it was still another kind of I'm cool, you're not cool sort of thing, which I always hated. But in general, I have to be honest and say I'm thankful for that experience. Like getting shafted a lot through that experience and not having the ability to do certain things or not even being brought into work with Nike overall when when that contract ended or actually didn't end that way. I was working in 1948. And the person that brought us in was cool. Then that person left. And then the person that was brought in was all right. And then that person left. And then the other person that got brought in just wanted to get rid of everybody and start again from scratch because they didn't like any of us or didn't like me and somebody else maybe. I don't know. But I was one of the people that basically got let go when the third sort of like head of whatever Nike energy marketing came in. And that person basically got rid of all of us and basically started again from fresh with their own people, which is understandable. It's like football, right? When a new CEO comes in or a new owner, they usually get rid of the manager and basically want to get their own people so they can kind of start their own legacy or make their own make their own legacy. Understandable. So I kind of am okay with the shaftness because I think getting shafted and being kind of dismissed in that fashion basically made me... It kind of... a. Uh, how to say this it kind of made me realize and wake up to the fact that i knew kind of well i wanted to be i kind of started looking at the james jebbias again this is really aiming high the james jebbias the hiroshi fujiwaras the aaron bondaros the sean sushis the nigos uh the tetsu nishiyamas right those are my guys now instead of looking at the mid-level people i was like nah those are my kind of north stars those are people that i kind of want to emulate and kind of follow in their footsteps and it kind of positioned me that way. And then I just turned into a consumer. So instead of kind of trying to lick these guys' asses to get these jackets and stuff, I just like, you know what? I'm going to make my own or I'm going to work for these companies or whatever. I'm going to start my own thing. Da, 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 da. Those are, that, that's kind of what the shafting has done. But this entire experience was horrible. I hated it, hated it, hated it. And since then, it hasn't got any better, really. And it's ironic, too. Like I said, like the people that are still getting these team jackets are old fogies who are legitimately expired and they're showing off to kids the same way they were showing off to us back in the day and you know they had like five years experience on us sometimes 10 years experience and they're showing off that they got these jackets yeah of course because you've been around since the fucking 80s and you know everybody of course they're going to give it to you but it's not as if you this old guy wearing it is going to make me as a kid want it it's just a limited edition thing that you want it's not necessarily the person wearing it. it's just because it's rare and it's expensive same sort of thing with these sort of jackets it's just i don't know it just it grinds my gears it really does because it doesn't feel inclusive it really is othering it's separating of people there's this idea that all these people have in the scene where they're always like talking about the kids and what they're doing with the kids and and it's not about the kids it's never been about the kids it's always just about self-serving themselves and giving themselves pats on the back and wanking themselves off in public and the kids basically get charged one million dollars for whatever stuff that they put out there's nothing else that they do there so i absolutely hate team jackets i think they're a, an absolute nuisance and i would much prefer if team jackets were actually given to kids who are actually legitimately doing cool and interesting things wherever city um that those team jackets are being launched in maybe use the team jackets to launch and identify some cool kids doing interesting things don't just give them to the same old old fogies that are basically vibing or kind of yeah out you know vibing out people that are going to their stores and just being absolute cunts i don't like it I, obviously i've always always hated it and um i just can't i just yeah i've always hated it i've always thought it's fucking annoying um because there's no point like why select some people and not select others especially when the others people that you're selecting are like not like uh, i don't you know i don't want to say too much because i don't get in trouble but i hate team jackets they're the absolute scourge of society and they should be completely outlawed in every way shape or form they should be completely completely outlawed